All right, welcome back to the Duck Hill Workshop. My name is Ben. Today, oh, we've got a lot going on because we haven't had had a whole week off from really any shop activity <clears throat> other than I got one day to do a little bit of epoxy work. <clears throat> this is the, the maple plank that will become uh, the other set of silver maple panels if you've been following along. <clears throat> the first set of silver maple panels has their second coat of tried and true oil. Oh my goodness, these just feel like this finish after the oil soaks in and then you burnish it down with steel wool. It really, it almost feels like glass. It's beautiful. And so we had something interesting happen and I <clears throat> took these out of, apparently I didn't do a very good job coating all of my molds in release because the one was plywood and you can see like it took a layer of plywood off and kept it stuck there and then this one <clears throat> is actually another piece of silver maple totally wrapped up and when I tried to knock it loose it split this was a whole longer board and here's the rest of it <clears throat> it split that off completely and it's still stuck to the board so that has to come undone and then just for uh, for giggles I filled this piece of maple as well. This is actually hard maple. So those all need to get cleaned up, put through the cleaner. Ooh, that filled that nicely. Now this is stuck to my hand. <clears throat> uh, let's see, what else are we gonna do? We are finally going to start doweling the legs. Once the dust frames are done, I had to fix a few, so I'll show you what happens when you screw up dowels, how to fix it. It's pretty easy. <clears throat> uh, I'll tell you. Basically, the gist is, is you just glue dowels into the holes you made, and you flush cut them, uh, and then very carefully clean it up. Because you don't want to change the... These are finished pieces, so you don't want to change the dimension, but you just want to fill that hole in with material so you can re-drill the holes. What else? show you how to make a DIY doweling jig. So that should help get these dowels done. So without further ado, let's get these things through the, the planer and get into building. Let's get to this. <clears throat> All right, so our panels down to thickness, and then they've been, I've sanded them uh, up to 150 grit just to kind of clean them up a little bit, take the sanding marks off, uh, clean up any residual burn marks. Now, obviously they need to get trimmed to length, and then they also need to get trimmed to width. But before we do any of that, what I need to do is put them in, put them in the moxin vise. You might be able to see that as I put these together, there's just a tiny, tiny seam of light in there. And as we push that together with a clamp, it will, it should seal up. But what happens if I take these, line them up so that that glue edge is together, if I put them in the moxin vise and then just plane this, really quick until I'm getting an even shaving off of both sides, then regardless of whether or not that joint is square, once you flip it back out to be a panel, that joint matches, it mates up perfectly, and will help make a better glue joint. So, I'm gonna do that really quick. Let's do it. Thank you. 
Okay, so our panels are cut to width. They're just a little bit over length and that's easy to trim in the end once they're glued up. So, a couple things to address before we get into the glue up. One, I showed you the same resawing on the table saw for this set of panels. However, this time what I did, instead of setting the fence to an eighth of an inch or just over an eighth of an inch and taking the same panel, just moving the blank closer to the fence, I actually did the opposite and moved the fence in every time I made a cut. And that seemed to produce cleaner cuts. I had a lot less material. I had a lot less unevenness, which is also I probably had squarer edges on my blank than I did the first time. I was left with less scorch marks and less of a seam in the middle that needed to be leveled. So I had a lot less planing to do afterwards. Actually, I'm just gonna glue up so I don't need those. So that I think is a better method than setting the fence in, at a static position. Uh, you just have to decide whether you want to be really, really precise uh, and get your uh, veneers to come off at the same size, or if you're okay with a little bit of wiggle room and then plane them to the same size afterwards, which is what I did. So now let's glue up. I am going to do this a little bit differently than I did the first time because the first time was a bit of a headache. So we're going to glue this, each one individually. I'm gonna set out a couple of clamping calls each just to keep the whole thing flat. I'm gonna clamp the ends of the seams and the corners, uh, and then wherever else we need to clamp. So, i make sure I've got handy dandy little spring clamps. Whoa. All of my F clamps. I am missing, I don't know where I managed to lose that to. This is something I can probably still use the same calls for both sets of panels. I just don't need to be applying pressure this way to both sets of panels at the same time. So I'm gonna also get my quick clamps. And you know what, I'm gonna grab a handful more spring clamps because those are probably the most useful clamps that I have for keeping this panel flat. There, I've got these, I will set off to the side. So now let's, let's do this. And hold on, pause. I'm gonna turn the radio on. We're gonna fast forward all this motion anyways, but I want something to listen to. So I'll be right back. Wow. I really do wish that I could, one, let you listen to the radio. If licensing weren't an issue, I would let you listen to the radio. My favorite station, uh, 89.3 The Current, is playing the top 893 songs from the last decade, two decades. So since, what, 2004, 2000? <clears throat> and it has just been like my favorite song after my favorite song after my favorite song. That's been awesome. But you know, licensing, I can't let you hear that. Uh, um, this actually went pretty well, the glue up, and obviously I do, I need to buy more little F clamps or something would be the ideal thing for it, uh, but this definitely went better than my first clamp up, my first glue up, especially being able to use the two clamping calls. Now, <clears throat> a couple of people asked me on the last one why I didn't use the four-way pressure clamps. And that's because they have a minimum thickness. So you have to be at, I believe, a half an inch, maybe a little bit more, to clear the mechanism of the, the end clamps. So you really thin stock is difficult to clamp unless you like build it up. Uh, and I didn't want to do that. So other than that, this glue up went pretty well. I'm going to set it aside and then we're going to work on the rest of the case. So. Cool. All right, so <clears throat> all four of our panels, all four of our panels are cut to size. However, these two obviously have finish on them, while these two do not, because my can of tried and true oil right now is at a client's house. <clears throat> I helped him prep and finish his 
the first coat of three or four on his bar top, but because there's a day, you know, a 24 hour cure time for every coat of tried and true uh, original oil, you know, it's not quite cost effective to drive an hour every day to go put another coat on. So I'm waiting for Dan to finish up with that and then these will start getting finish on them. However, that's nice. These two things are finally done. I don't have to worry about it anymore, but that's... Ooh, that one's upside down. Uh, I need more hands and I'm trying not to spill my coffee. So that'll be the... <clears throat> that'll be the side. Unfortunately, this will be the side that gets hidden against the wall. But I like details, so eventually someday in the future, if this desk ever moves, um, someone will pull it out and be like, ooh, there's still pretty things that are hidden against the wall, or hidden. So I think those will be really interesting. <clears throat> and then obviously, obviously, we still have these two beautiful, pretty panels. All right, so next step is I have to build these dust frames so that I can essentially start putting this cabinet together and actually have it be a real thing. <clears throat> it's since I finished those panels, it's the next step. And I'm a little anxious about it because the first time I tried it, the first my experiment, I screwed it up. <clears throat> Mostly because I tried to do it just by hand. And so with all of these, I just went back in, glued dowels in place and then flush cut them with my coping saw. I need to clean it up a little bit. If you've got a flush trim saw, that would be a better option. It's not a problem. So I have this piece of scrap, which is pretty, it's a nice piece of, of ash, but it's got some of these stress cracks that I cut out of the bigger slabs. So I'm gonna machine that down to be the same thickness as all of these, these horizontals. And basically I'm just gonna make a my own doweling jig. So we'll end up, we'll put a flat piece over the top so we get a good registration. <clears throat> It'll have the spacing for the holes already prepped in it. And I'll be able to use that on all the parts and pieces so that our dowels match up really well. And then I'll also, because this will be the same size as our legs, I'll also make another one that fits into here, into each of these slots. And then I'm just able to dowel in as well. So let's get to it. Okay, so now, I've machined this down to be the same thickness. <clears throat> and now we need to cut a piece that is the same width as these horizontals. So, loosen up my marking gauge, get a rough set. About perfect there. And I wanna get the piece that's the most solid, so. <clears throat> okay, so that's gonna be my gauge my block or my jig. Now what I need to do is I'm going to drill mark center and drill the two holes on the drill press because it's easier to drill it as a hole like this than if I cut this out and then we'll put a plastic top of like a maybe a Lexan or something. I think I have a little bit laying around. We're going to jump over to the drill press really quick. I don't feel like moving the camera so I'm not going to show you that. I'm just drilling the holes. Okay, so now I have my drilled out jig, or the actual thing that I'll hold align the will line the, the drill bit, cut a piece of my silver maple veneer, and we'll glue that to the top like that. And then also because I want to be able to catch the edge. So I'm not just gonna be on the top, but for some of these I also want to be able to do that. So I'm going to try to do, woohoo, we're going to do the top one first and then we'll think about doing this side one to catch the corners. All right. There we have a 
dowling jig. So it will happen because I made this exactly the width of the boards that I'm doweling into, is that I don't have to worry about measuring where those dowels go, I just have to clamp this in place, drill my holes, <clears throat> and move on. So. All right, this is exciting because this frame is doweled and test fit together. So I've got one other that's test fit together, which is the one that I originally screwed up. Uh, and I have, it's two, four. I still need to make cross rails apparently for two more guys, six frames total. I, I only have components for four of them. <clears throat> So, however, what I'm going to do is glue these four up, or at least start. <clears throat> uh, but that's where I'm gonna leave you for this week. So we've done the second panel, second veneer set of veneer panels. We've made a doweling, a DIY doweling jig, and we've started assembling these dust frames, which means that we pick up next week, we can start assembling the cabinet. I'll show you. We'll do a little bit more doweling and we'll make a jig that fits into each of these uh, mortises, dados, these are dados, um, that fits into these dados and lines up with the uh, frames as well because that's what we're going to do. We're going to dowel them into these sides then we can glue and it's gonna be awesome. A freestanding cabinet all on its own. So stay tuned until next time.